Just to start out, I'll mention if you're going to use a WD-40 can, this is a small size one. The cap will work perfectly uh, for this project. And uh, yeah, I will also say that the old school WD-40 can, which was big, had the same cap. Unfortunately, these days you can't find that in the store anymore. You find WD-40 in the larger size, but this unique uh, apparatus. So you're going to want that small can. Another one that works is this Johnson's de-icer, which has a cap that's identical in shape and size to the WD-40 cap that you need. So if you want black instead, you can get the de-icer. Another thing, the fidget spinner that's going to be put into use here is one that I obtained on eBay. This is a $6 fidget spinner uh, shipped from California. I didn't have to wait for it to get shipped from Asia, fortunately. Um, just take off the little caps and once you've got the bearing exposed on the inside, uh, it's ready to roll. This is a very good fidget spinner for two reasons. Number one, it's heavy and it's got a lot of momentum. Uh, which is going to be a good uh, plan for this particular project. So once you get these um, little finger holders off, then it's going to be in its form that you will use for the project. I initially was using these plastic fidget spinners that were circular in shape. The shape's fine, and the width of the, the circle is just fine. This is a Pokemon spinner, and this one's a Captain America glow-in-the-dark spinner. But there's a couple things wrong with these. Um, number one, they're very lightweight. It's not really helpful for the project if they're really light. Also, when you take off these thumb pads and get to the, the bearing on the inside, it's sometimes when it's positioned inside the mechanism here during the project, it'll slide up or down. It's not, it's not gonna be ideal. So just be aware if you're if you try to use a, a plastic or rubber fidget spinner, um, it, it's not gonna be ideal. You want the metal one, solid metal is good. All right, so I, you know, I just want you to know, you can go to the description here and look through the parts list. I won't go through it all here right now, but I just uh, will say I went into very, uh, very good detail in the description about each of these components. And uh, we're gonna pan over this table just real quick here so you can see you know, what we have here. We got a couple of uh, washers here. You only need one of them. Uh, we've got this thread seal tape. We're only using it for its spindle. The spindle is going to be a very important part of the project, and it happened to be about the perfect size. So this was at less than a dollar at Walmart. So a lot of these parts and pieces are very inexpensive. Uh, when you add it all up, hopefully you don't have to buy a drill, but uh, you know when you add it up, uh, you will not have spent a lot of money. All right. So and another thing, I'm going to be making a template for the surface of this and we're gonna be using some paint and uh, also some very thin balsa wood, which can actually be cut with scissors into a circular shape. And you'll wanna drill a hole into the center of it using this drill um, cylinder, and it makes a perfect circle. There may be other ways to create a hole in that balsa wood, um, but this is the way that I've cho chosen to do it. All right, so yeah, let's get on with the project. All right, so at this point we're going to, uh, well, if it was 1982, we'd be voiding the warranty on this little guy, but uh, it's not in 82 anymore. All right, you're gonna remove some screws and some pivotal points. It's really easy to take those screws out. And then you wanna open it this way, okay? This is the key. Open it that way, not another way. You don't want these wires getting disconnected, otherwise you'd be in trouble. All right, we're gonna remove the ball. The ball will not be used from this point out. And what you want to do is make sure if these are not moving smoothly, these little optical encoder wheels should move very smoothly. If they're not, like moving like this, this is not moving very well, then you want to take that out. You want to pull this off. You want to use a little silicone grease on that. Uh, you can use sewing machine grease or oil or something like that. And then uh, do the same here. You want to lubricate that and not much needed, just a dab and then bring it in. But you don't want it on this part of the, of the uh, cylinder. Okay, so you do it to this one, you do it to this one, and this one doesn't need it, okay? Actually, the only one of these really that's gonna get used during this project is this right here, okay? This is your, the one that's gotta be uh, very pivotal to the project. So you're gonna be creating a platform here out of this wood. This is something I obtained at Hobby Lobby. This is made by the company uh, Woodpile, and it was $2.33. It's called Utility Wood. There's actually two pieces in here. 
uh, you're, you're only going to need one. So I'm going to show you an um, image of the dimensions that you're going to make the platform. Um, there it is. And so that those images or that image is showing you uh, the dimensions in inches. And so now what we're going to do is to cut the wood to the right um, dimensions. Okay, so I've cut the wood, or I've got the wood ready to cut, and I've measured it with the ruler to the exact dimensions that were shown before, and used my pen to uh, make sure that it was drawn out properly. All right, so your first cut that you're going to use, I'm on some granite here, so we're not going to be uh, causing the table to get damaged. The first cut is going to be a straight up cut. So let's, I'll come back when I'm done. All right, so there we go. We've got our first cut. On to the second cut. All right, I'll come back when this is done. All right, we made that cut. Now we're going to come from above and take that uh, line all the way down. And then after we're done with that, we're going to turn it this way and take that line down and we'll remove this rectangular part. So yeah, I'll cut out and come back when that's done. All right, so there we go. We've got ourselves uh, the right shape. Uh, this part's really not that big of a deal if it's not exact. This really needs to be pretty exact. And this, I think, I did a pretty good job getting that angled right. Okay, and of course the thickness, we don't have to worry about that. This should be the right thickness um, innately. And we've of course got these right. Oh, very good right angles there. All right. Let me put it inside the uh, unit just to show you how it fits. Okay, so let's now see how well we've got it to fit here. Okay, so it's not quite right. And I think the issue is here. So we're going to sand this down a ways, okay? Not too far. I'll come back show you that in a minute. All right, so we did some sanding. I used the metal file to accomplish that. Used the rough side right here, and then eventually, after it sanded enough, I used the smoother side. All right, and we've got a pretty smooth edge now. And looks like it's going to fit. So let me show you something about this. Um, you're going to want contact points here and here. Also, this is a little bit of a contact point, but unfortunately, that's not enough contact to make it a stable platform. You've got contact, and but unfortunately, it might still swivel down this way, and it might end up popping up. So you want to add a little bit of extra support. We're going to show you that by using some dowel um, rods, uh, little tiny pieces of wooden cylinders. That one's going to be glued here. One will be placed here and there. I'll show you in a minute how to do that, but it's very simple. Before we do that, though, I do want to drill the center hole where our main dowel rod, uh, the spindle, is going to be uh, placed. And the idea, when you, when you drill into this, you, you can drill all the way through, but what would be ideal is to drill a certain way down, almost all the way, maybe not all the way through. And if you do drill through, maybe having just a tiny little hole there um, is okay, but you don't want it fully drilled through. And the idea is so that you don't want that, that, uh, spindle to go through and start pressing on these. Okay. So yeah, this, this wood itself is not pressing on these. We don't want anything pressing on these. Okay. So here we go. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and drill into that. We'll see how it goes. So we've got ourselves the uh, 7 30 seconds inch DeWalt speed tip uh, mounted on my drill. So we're going to take it straight down, right in the center of that uh, little plus sign there. Didn't have to go too far. I think, I think we're almost through. I'm going to take it just to the very edge. Yeah, we got a little tiny mark there where it's starting to come through. So I think that's probably far enough. All right, so now I've marked the dowel rod here. This is a quarter inch. It's a poplar dowel rod. And we want to cut it at the 
one and three eighths inch length. So once you got it started on one side, that's a little tough. You want to then flip it over and get it on the other side as well. There we go. All right, so now we have the dowel rod, and I've marked it right here with a pen at the 11 30 seconds of an inch point. So we're going to cut that. All right, so this is the smallest piece that you're going to make with that um, uh, 5 16 inch dowel. It's 11 30 seconds of an inch in length. I'll put that right there. And the next dowel, again, you're using the 5 16 inch dowel. You're going to cut it at the 25 30 seconds of an inch point, which I've marked there with a pen. All right, here we go. Okay, so you not only made one of those, but you actually made two of them exact same lengths. Okay, these two, it's not necessarily that important to sand down the tops uh, or the bottoms, but this one I did sand down top and bottom because that's kind of important. This one's going to be super glued uh, to a part of this to keep, keep it stable. Now, these three right here are the 5 16 inch um, uh, diameter dowel. Uh, this longer one, though, was the quarter inch dowel, and it's probably a little big for that hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to bore out that hole with the bit, and I'm just going to use my hand on the bit and just twist it around. Now, be aware these bits are, are they can cut your skin, so you might want to put a glove on and twist it around a little bit and then try you know, try seeing if it gets a little closer to the right size. Now, you don't want it the right size. You want it a little bit smaller than the right size. So you could then take your hammer and bang it down in through there and get it all the way out down to the bottom. If you want to put a teeny tiny dab of super glue on here when you're, uh, you know, doing that or put the teeny tiny dab of super glue in there, you can. Um, you do risk, by the way, doing this, you risk cracking it here or here um, because of the issues with, you know, jamming it in there. If it does crack, you can always super glue it back together. I've made one of these platforms before where it did crack, and I just super glued it, and it held firm, and it worked uh, very well. But uh, hopefully I'll get it without cracking it. We'll find out soon. All right, I did score it out a little bit. Didn't take much. It was a very short <laughs> lapse of uh, time there. Ninety degree angle looks like it's very well held in there. Okay, so we got ourselves the uh, quarter inch installed. All right, next we're going to do a little super glue job. All right, just a small dab right here, and then flip this over, and it will. Hopefully, I won't glue my finger. I think I did. All right. Right on the quarter, right there. Just put that in the hammer, and that should just settle. All right, so now we're going to take these small uh, quarter inch dowel pieces and slide them right in there. And that gives a little bit of a post, and this will be the post to be planting right here. And it's a nice tight fit, so it's not wobbling. Looks like it's good. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to take a uh, rubber band and wrap it a little around there so that we can have a little bit more stability. You want that right down up against the wood giving it a little bit of a downwards push. Okay, and now we're going to take the OT thread seal tape and we are going to, you know, this is about a half inch wide, okay? 
the spindle is about the perfect size and the half inch wide tape is but we don't have enough tape in here we want to make it a little bit further out toward the outer wall and to do that we're going to use this half inch double sided tape I would just use regular tape but the regular tape I could find in my area wasn't a half inch so anyway you just basically take that I hope you hope you're seeing this well and I'm going to start um, just wrapping it okay and I'll wrap it until it's at the right um, length okay so this could take a few a minute or two so I'm gonna just skip that I'll show you a little bit what it looks like okay so I did wrap the double-sided tape around this until I got the right uh, amount and then now I'm going to take this masking tape that I just cut and wrap it around it all the way so we get a surface that's a little bit it's got a little bit of um, uh, I guess texture to it and we want some friction um, to occur with the band that we're going to have going around this spindle okay all right there we go Okay, looks good. It's not sticky either. We didn't want stickiness. All right. Okay, so now we've got our metal fidget spinner, our washer, and this is our um, spindle, the thread seal tape spindle. And I will uh, mention here that the, uh, the this is called a thick fender washer, and this is the serial number. It's a half by two. Okay, so if you it's made by Hillman, you can probably get a variety of these uh, different by, made by different companies. All right, so you're going to take the uh, fun tack and you're going to apply it. I already applied quite a bit liberally to this uh, underside of the uh, spindle. Okay, might want to add just a little bit more here. Okay, now you can also utilize glue that. You know, hard glue that connects plastic to metal, if you want to. I, I've just known it when I did my prototype that the FunTac really did adhere it very, very effectively and had no problems with it becoming disconnected or loose or, you know, sticky or anything like that. All right, so we're getting a really good contact here. And the way to test it that's going to be successful, I believe, is to really give it a good pull. And it's not coming apart. So I think we got really good adherence. You can look inside and see that we've got it um, yeah, pretty well lined up. All right. And then we're going to attach this to the top. Again, we can use fun tack or we can even solder it. Uh, just don't solder this part to that or, or this, even that. I think maybe you'd want to just solder this outer ring and uh and that should be sufficient all right we're going to try to line it up i'll show you what that looks like and we're going to center it up by looking down the down the center check it out just eyeballing it right now we do want to have it very well centered yeah we're getting a good contact here and again we're not able to get pulling it apart so that's a good sign okay all right so this is our center bearing okay so we got the uh, 5200 track ball ready to roll here uh, here in a minute so what we're going to do you know one thought is you might want to put a bearing down here to add some thickness I'm kind of thinking we don't need that but that's a backup plan got a couple of nut nuts here that we're going to put on one small one uh, this one fits pretty tight to it this one's kind of a looser one but that just doesn't matter we're trying to get the height proper so that when this is mounted the bottom of this bearing will be up against that and there's a purpose you know if we didn't have those in there if we didn't have them in there, this is going to go too low and end up bumping up against the wood. Okay, but as it stands, I don't think we've got contact with the wood. And if we do, 
then we may want to raise it a little higher by adding a washer. Let me check it. So yeah, here we are, we're in reality, and reality means sometimes things don't work perfectly. It's kind of grinding to a halt sometimes, and I believe that's because of the rubber band situation. And it isn't exactly a perfect spindle experience, as you can see. So we're going to have to adjust the, uh, the white uh, spindle a little bit more, and I'll see if I can get it more perfected. And yeah, that rubber band may have to come in a little bit more. Okay, so thanks to the fact that I used a little uh, fun tack on all parts of this, I've managed to scooch it just a little bit so that we could get a much smoother situation. Is it perfection? No, but it doesn't have to be. And the reason it doesn't have to be is because I'm going to be using a band that goes around this entire spindle and goes around this spindle as well, and that's going to add some friction. And it's based, it has to have some friction in order to um, turn this, otherwise it'll slip over the surface of this metal, and we don't want that. Um, so, I mean, we could, I don't know, it, we just don't want any slippage, so we have to have the band at least semi-tight around these. And so I've chosen a band that's just the right length. So you can find a custom made band that might be the exact length that you need or you can, you know, rummage through your wife's hair bands and find two that actually worked pretty well. Uh, I believe the brand she uses is Scunchy or Scunsy. And yeah, this particular one, right, that we're looking at, they're definitely too small. Okay, so don't get those. You're going to want either a, a black one that's kind of got, you know, it's it's not you know, like a tube, but more like a f got flat edge. It's flat edged. This one is a tube, more like a tube. Okay. This also works. I think they both get good surface area coverage on our device. The one though that may seem to offer a little bit, tiny bit better spinner action on our device, and I'm not sure exactly why, is this one. Okay, but they'll both work, you know. I would say they're very comparable to each other in their uh, functionality. So, all right, let's go ahead and and get one on board. So, yeah, here I taped um, one of the hair bands to this uh, ruler, and you can see it's exactly at three inches if you tape it down. So um, that can help you one way to check and make sure it's not going to be too small or too big. All right, so next we're going to put the band around this. Actually, I'm not I'm not using that one. We're using this one. Okay. So you want it so that all edges are flat up against the spindle. And once you got that through there, then you're going to take this out. And instead of going like down and through like that, you're going to go up and through. Okay, up from the bottom. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to, yeah, that might fall off. Okay, there we go. So, now we got a ripple in that, so that's not quite right. Let's get that ripple out of there. There we go. Up and through. go so yeah there we go it works and I would say this is uh, you know it's definitely rotary it's I wouldn't call it a spinner but I would actually call it a rotary controller with some spin action okay might be a little bit better than that Jaguar rotary because it does spin a little bit just a tiny bit better than that all right so next we're gonna put on the knob okay so, yep, yeah, here's our WD-40 cap, the knob, I should say. Now, what's great about this is that it actually fits perfectly within that little area there. So, you have a choice. You can either hot glue it, you can glue it, 
or you can use uh, fun tack you put enough fun tack on that and it will definitely stay um, on there but it looks a little gummy and gummed up the thing is when you put the top back on you have um, you know a nice looking device I wouldn't say it's uh, you know, it's it's kind of cool this way, but you know, putting the little bezel or you could say the little um, wood piece on top with the Atari logo on it might make it look a little bit more awesome. Um, but this way actually kind of looks just fine. So yeah, you can choose if you want to glue it, and since it fits in there so perfectly, it actually is very presentable to have it like this. All right, but yeah, I'll probably go the extra mile and uh, put on that uh, that final uh, touch. All right, so yeah, we'll uh, go ahead and connect that and um, get it stuck on there. All right, so I'm just for now gonna connect it with FunTac, and since we're putting that pla uh, the wooden piece over the top, uh, this will not be visible. This FunTac is hearing very well okay so let's put it back on and there we go okay let's uh, fix the uh, the outer bezel okay so this is balsa wood it's pretty thin 1 16th inch by 3 by 24 nice long piece of wood All right, so I chose to cut the balsa wood, and um, you don't have to, but I just chose to. And we're going to mark it right in the center, which is where we're going to make the drill point. And then put it here. Actually, I'm going to use some fun tack. And the reason I'm using fun tack is so that we will not have slippage of the piece of wood when we're drilling. We're using two of these electric tape things. Okay, so we're going to center it, press it down. Now it won't spin. It shouldn't spin anyway. And we are now going to use our drill. We drill to make the hole in it. A little bit this way. There we go. worked all right so now I have the small piece of wood um, underneath this tape which I'm going to be now marking with a pen and that pen marking will give me a good area all right now I'm going to cut it all right so now we're going to make the cut on the balsa wood hopefully not cracking it and causing all sorts of havoc. So we'll see how this goes. Got a little bit of an issue there, but we can just sand it and make it a little tiny bit smaller and make it more of a circle. Okay, I'm going to start doing tangential cuts here. Okay, that's pretty good. So, yeah, we're going to have to do some sanding to make it a little bit smaller. I also drew a little pen mark on the inside using, again, this. Uh, this and, and that shows you how much material needs to be removed on the inside. And we'll be using uh, some sanding. Uh, probably sandpaper to remove that over the course of, oh, I don't know, a little while. It's going to take a while to sand at that. All right, so we pretty well got this taken care of. Here's how I did the sides. I basically just held it like this and went like this over and over, around all the way until I finally uh, got it to the right size. I ended up breaking that, so that's going to have to be super glued. And then it'll probably have a little bead of dried super glue there that'll have to be sanded, but that's no big deal. 
since it's not noticeable. You can see there's some damage here, so we won't use this on the top. This will be on the top. For the inside, you know, I've used this on the outside. This won't really work too well on the inside. So I just used um, sandpaper. This is pretty hard grade sandpaper. And I just curled it around a finger and just went like this for a good solid 10 minutes. And uh, up and down to in certain times. Anyway, um, it ended up doing a good job. This is exactly the proper size. All right. Okay, so yeah, we're going to be spray painting to uh, a dark walnut shade. Okay, here we go. Alright, so what we're going to do is remove the uh, internet printout and we are going to place this on in its place and actually they are pretty similar to each other. There's a little difference but you know this one's been hand painted and uh, yeah I definitely, uh, well, I, I'd say it's close to perfect but maybe not perfect. All right. So what you're going to want to do here is to put some fun tack right around that area there and flatten it as best as you can. All right.
Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode as much as I have. Retrofitting the Atari 5200 trackball has certainly been a lot of fun for me. And, you know, I hope some of you get to enjoy this. I look forward to hearing some of your feedback, uh, especially those of you who have attempted to do the mod. I definitely want to hear back from you. And, and if you encounter any issues, I'm here to help. Also, if you come up with a better idea that allows this thing to maybe spin a little better or maybe get a little bit more uh, enhanced uh, placement inside the body of the trackball controller, I'm all ears. So uh, by all means, we'd like to upgrade uh, as much as we can in the future. All right, so um, basically this is wrapping it up. I definitely look forward to hearing your comments. Also, definitely give us a like. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I've got some great things in store. So if you like classic gaming, definitely subscribe to my channel and you won't be disappointed. Another thing I want to mention is that I am a part of the Atari 5200 podcast with my four other buddies who share in the show, uh, Captain Bob, uh, Dave Facetic, and Pete Spivak, and don't forget, Glenn Planamento, who has his own YouTube channel, so you should check out his channel as well. But yeah, if you just type into a search engine Atari 5200 podcast, you'll be able to listen to uh, all five or six of our episodes thus far in the uh, podcast arena. So. Uh, I hope you enjoy those. Um, we got a lot of good things to talk about, and it's often just kind of funny, so you might want to check it. All right, talk to you guys later. We'll be doing a video soon. Bye. <laughs>